Shalom, the grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. This is the homily for the Solemnity of Epiphany. The theme that I've chosen for this Sunday is an appeal to reason for the existence of God. On March 12, 2008, the John Templeton Foundation made the announcement of the winner of its annual Templeton Prize, which honors achievements engaging the great questions of life and the universe. The 1.6 million prize for 2008 went to Michael Heller, a Polish cosmologist and professor in the Faculty of Philosophy at the Pontifical Academy of Theology in Krakow, Poland. What makes Heller additionally remarkable is that he is a Catholic priest. Father Heller said, If we ask about the cause of the universe, we should ask about the cause of of mathematical laws. By doing so, we are back in the great blueprint of God's thinking about the universe, the question on ultimate causality. Why is there something rather than nothing? When asking this question, we are not asking about a cause like all other causes. We are asking about the root of all possible causes. Science is but a collective effort of the human mind to read the mind of God from question marks out of which we and the world around us seem to be made. As a pre-scientist, Father Heller is not unique. Rather, he stands in a long and great tradition of learned priests who were both scientists and men of faith. There is no doubt Christianity and Judaism are the revealed religion but it does not mean you cannot know God by reason. The Magi, the wise men, studied the planets and stars, and the study led them to Jesus. Epiphany Sunday is a good moment to consider the uses of science. Perhaps you had a son return from college and tell you he now believes in science, or even the science has disproved Christianity. How will you respond? My goal in this homily is to appeal to your reason for belief in God with the help of the book by Peter Kreft called Because God is Real. What is faith and what is reason? Faith means believing. Believing either something, some idea like E is equal to MC square or the sun will rise tomorrow or someone that is trusting a person. Reason means knowing something to be true with your mind. Especially it means proving something to be true, giving good reasons. Proving something is only one way of coming to know it, for example, science. So reason means knowing something to be true with your mind. There are different ways of knowing God and faith and reason are two of those ways. What are the different ways of knowing? How do we know anything at all? We have three ways of knowing anything. We could call them three eyes. This is very important, so pay attention to it and try to remember. The first eye is in the physical body. It is the five senses. Sight, hearing, touch, taste and smell. The second eye is in the soul. It is the mind, the reason, the intellect. We often call this the head, though it is not just the physical head. A third eye is in the heart. This is not the physical heart, the organ in the center of the body that pumps the blood, but the power at the center of the soul. The heart does not see with the bodily eyes, nor does it reason and prove with the intellect, but it just knows or intuits or sees with the inner eye, the eye of the heart. Heart does not mean sentiment or, or emotion here, but something deeper. It is a way of knowing, not just feeling. The first eye is in the physical body. We use our senses to know material things like stars, jars and cars. Sense knowledge is the best way to know material things. The second eye is in the soul. It is in the mind, the reason and the intellect. We use our minds, our heads to know abstract 
truths like mathematics, logic, and scientific principles. Intellectual knowledge is the best way to know abstract truths. The third eye is in the heart. It just knows it or intuits or sees with the inner eye, the eye of the heart. We use our hearts as well as our senses and our reason to know people and ourselves and others. Heart knowledge is the best way to know people. We know people in all three ways. But the person who has only sense knowledge of you or only head knowledge of you does not know you as well as the person who has heart knowledge of you who knows you by heart. Now let's apply these three ways of knowing to God. How do we know God? We can know God with two of our three eyes. He can be known with the head by reason and with the heart by faith, hope and love but not with the senses. God cannot be sensed because he does not have a material body. He does not have a material body because he is infinite. Infinite means unlimited. Material bodies are limited since they exist only in some places and not others and only at some times and not others. No material body exists everywhere and at every time, but God does. Although he is not a human person, God is a person, actually, three divine persons. So, he is known best as any person is known best by the heart's experience, especially the experience of loving him. That is the best way to know a human person too, by genuine unselfish love. We all know that. Think about this. Which of these two friends of yours knows you better? Friend A, who is very intelligent but loves you and cares about you only a little. Or friend B, who is less intelligent, but who loves you and cares about you very, very much. Who knows you better? Your teacher or your mother? 4. If we know God best by the heart, why do we need to prove God's existence with a reason? Because some people do not believe He exists. Human persons can be seen with the senses, the first eye. So, we don't have to use the second eye, the eye of reason, to prove that human persons exist. But God cannot be sensed by the first eye. So, we need to prove his existence with the second eye to people who do not have faith and love, the third eye. So, even if you already know by faith that God exists, it's good for you to know that your reason and your faith agree. Number five, what is the very best way of knowing God? The heart gives you better knowledge of persons than the head. The third eye, the heart, has its own ways of knowing God. Faith, hope and love are the heart's three main ways of knowing God. They are not proofs or arguments, they are direct acknowledgements of His presence. Faith in God means essentially trusting God. The more we trust Him, the more we know Him. The more we trust Him, the more certain we are that He is real and that He is trustable. The same principle works with human beings. The best way to know them is trust. Sometimes the only way to know them is trust. The more you trusted your parents as a baby, the more you knew them. And God is much more superior to us than parents or to babies. So even when we are adults, Trust is the best way to know God. Hope in God means trusting His promises. Hope is faith directed to the future. So what does loving God mean? If you love anyone totally, you admire Him and you want to be like Him and you also want to be with Him, close to Him. So loving God means first of all admiring Him. In fact, totally admiring Him because He's totally admirable, adoring him because he is literally adorable, he is perfect. It means admiring and valuing what he is, truth and goodness. It also means wanting to be like him, wanting to be true and good. And it means wanting to be close to him, wanting to be with him, wanting to share your life with him, wanting to spend time with him and talk with him. That's what prayer is. 
you know, God better by trusting him, hoping in him and loving him than by proving his existence by reason. But you can prove his existence by reason. Six, do faith and reason ever contradict each other? No, never. Remember the three ways of knowing things, the three eyes. We know some things by our senses, for instance, that the sky is blue and the fire is hot. We know some things by our reason, for instance, that effects need causes and that a whole cannot be smaller than any of its parts. We also know some things, especially in science, by our reason combined with our senses. For instance, that the earth is round and that there were dinosaurs. We know some things by faith, trust in God's revelation. For instance, that Jesus will come again and that he is really present in the Eucharist. The senses are the eyes of the body. The reason is the eye of the mind. Faith is the eye of the heart. The heart is deeper than ordinary surface feelings as well as deeper than the mind. The heart is at the center of the soul as a physical heart is at the center of the body. All three eyes can make mistakes. But when they do not make mistakes, when they know the truth, they do not contradict each other. Truths known by one method or I can never contradict truths known by another method or I. For truth can never contradict truth. Only falsehood contradicts truth. Therefore, there can never be any real contradiction between any truth known by faith and any truth known by reason or sense experience. So, if the Catholic faith is divine revelation, as the church and the Bible tell us it is, then nothing in it can ever contradict any truth discovered by reason. If there were any real contradiction between faith and reason, that would prove that the faith was untrue. You can't be a Catholic and believe that there is any contradiction between the Catholic faith and anything reason proves to be true. For to be a Catholic is to believe the Catholic faith, that is, to believe that it is true. So if the Catholic faith is true, no other truth can ever contradict it, no matter how that other truth is discovered and no matter what it is. The wise man encountered baby Jesus because that's what sincere search does. It helps you to find the most important person in your life, Jesus. Amen.